Saturday is the 47th anniversary of the Cushada Tribe of Louisiana's federal re-recognition, which took place in June 27th of 1973. We're looking at a map, uh, an old Spanish map, in 1540 when Hernando de Soto came up the Mississippi River and his party took a, uh, a northeasterly uh, hook, his expedition, and they encountered a group of over a thousand or so, approximately a thousand Cushadas in northern Alabama right in this area here. So from that point forward, from the point of uh, first European contact, which occurred uh, in 1540 with the Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto, the Cushadas made a series of uh, westerly uh, migration. And I'm proud and pleased to report that um, the, uh, the historical record shows that the Cushadas were never forcefully re removed from, uh, from wherever they were at at the time. Um, the Cushada chiefs and leaders at the time had enough foresight and knowledge to know that they had to navigate the North American continent, specifically the southeastern United States, when it was being fought over by European powers, the French, the Spanish, and the English. So again, I'm very proud of the fact that the historical record shows that the Cushadas were never, were never part of forced removal. Our chiefs and leaders over the course of our history since the first contact with Europeans had enough knowledge and foresight to know that, hey, this is the way we're going to protect our people, we're going to make sure we survive, and they moved and they made a series of movements um, over the course of uh, Cushada history and around the 1840s and 50s is where we ended up at our present day location here in Allen Parish. In 1930, uh, the federal government came in and provided uh, an extension of the government-to-government -government relationship between Indian tribes and the federal government, mandated by Congress and supported by treaty uh, rights that we signed with different uh, entities in the United States. And we had that relationship until 1953, when the Eisenhower administration came in and decided uh, to eliminate a lot of the infrastructure of Indian tribes and to uh, what we call the determination era of that time. And so in 1953, the Bureau, the Bureau of Indian Affairs under the Department of Interior decided we would be one of 12 tribes uh, terminated across the country. So that existed uh, for about 20 years, 19 years or 20 years, uh, where the, the tribe did not have a relationship with the federal government like other tribes in the country. So the termination area affected uh, the people here in, in ways that uh, brought a lot of uh, poverty, uh, a lot of issues. Uh, there was no employment here, uh, no medical care of any kind. Uh, for example, no housing substandard housing existed after the uh, Interior Department left. So that begins the story of the journey of the people that wanted to restore the relationship of the tribe with the federal government again, and thus began the journey of reaching out to different uh, people and ways to reinstitute the relationship because it is a responsibility of the federal government to recognize and issue the recognition status of Indian tribes, not only Cushadas, but different tribes around the country. We have 573 tribes under the, with a relationship with the federal government. So we wanted to restore that. And so that's the significance because once you get the recognition process, which we were able to finally get restored in 1973 after about eight year uh, battle to prove to the Congress and the federal government that we were the same Indians living here in Allen Parish as we were when they walked away in 1953. So after restoring that, the importance of uh, the restoration rights of the, of the Cushada people was that, again, once again, it offered, even though limited opportunities, uh, it offered a connection between the federal government and the tribe recognized as a nation within the nation. So that begins the, the, the uh, effort of our tribe to begin 
the restoration again of a tribal government. Our tribal elders under the direction of, uh, under the leadership at the time of my father, Ernest, um, they founded a sovereign nation, refounded a sovereign nation in the wilderness of Allen Parish here in southwest Louisiana. Like most Indian tribes, we are uh, inundated with, uh, for example, one disease is diabetes. So healthcare was the number one priority in, the, in our tribe. And even though we're a small tribe, at, the, at that time less than 100, uh, 200 people, we still had issues. We still had substandard housing we had to address. We still had the need to for educate our children. Uh, we still had a severe need, a crisis within the health population of, of the tribe. And so, and then community development was another area that we focused on. We had, we were almost landless. In fact, we were landless. We had to recreate a reservation base before the federal government would take uh, responsibility of what they're supposed to be doing for the tribe. So we started acquiring land to create a land base, which we lost back in 1953. So land, land acquisition was a uh, something that was very important to us because not only did we want to grow, as you see, property here, uh, to develop enterprises, to develop opportunities for employment, uh, and to also uh, bring a sense of community together once again. Uh, so this was the dream of the Kushada people to, to hold on to the beliefs and traditions and the culture and the heritage of, the, of other people. Even though we're a small tribe, we managed to survive because of what we believed in as a community, as a tribe, should be. Kushadas today uh, number uh, 966 tribal members. Approximately 40% of that total number are 18 and under, by the way. Um, the Kushadas uh, maintain their headquarters and, uh, and, and tribal lands uh, here in Allen Parish, uh, uh, approximately two miles north of Elton. The majority of our tribal people live in and around Jeff Davis, Allen Parish area. But our tribal members also live uh, in other areas around Louisiana and also across the nation as well. Um, approximately right, uh, right now, as of today, the Kushadas own approximately 7,000 acres across uh, our state. And, and uh, each year that land base continues to expand. As of today, as, a, as we stand here today, the Kushada have a, a five member tribal government that administers all the uh, policy for education, healthcare, housing, infrastructure, and so forth. The modern day tribal government has a very, very uh, big responsibility. Um, the policies uh, that we uh, uh, draft, debate, adopt, and implement affect not only 966 members of our constituents, but as we stand here today, the Kushadas have a significant impact economically um, on an entire region here in Southwest Louisiana. Prior to the COVID outbreak here uh, in, in, in the world, uh, for example, the Kushadas uh, uh, were in the top 10 largest private employer in the state of Louisiana, and uh, with a total workforce of uh, approximately 3,000 people at one time. It has always been my, uh, my interest and intent that we, as a Kushada tribe, as a Kushada people, I would like for the world to know that our existence adds to the greater population, uh, economically, politically, socially. Uh, we are a group of people that yet we are different Yet we are a nation, we are still a force that we would like partnerships to join us with. And the future of the Kushada tribe, as we see it today, night, and here we stand in 2020, uh, we see the most genuine and most critical opportunity for the Kushada people today. Today we can appreciate the funding of higher education where we send kids around the world to gain education. And hopefully some will come back and give back to the tribe. And we have probably the best health care program to take care of our elderly, to take care of our people. And 
the community development that we see in developing enterprises that brings added revenue to the tribe besides government funding, we cannot depend on government funding. So we have to be sophisticated enough to generate a revenue base of our own. So that's part of the dream to expand and to create partnerships and to provide a foundation for the leadership and the young people for tomorrow's vision of the Cushada people. As far as the future of the Cushadas here in Louisiana, we will continue focusing on the bedrock for any people or any community. And the bedrock and the foundation for any community and people, in my judgment and in my view, is focusing on those critical areas such as health, housing, education, social programs, and so forth. And also, in addition to that, continuing to focus on the care and well-being of our tribal elders, who we value dearly. People can go to the Kosati Heritage website and uh, find out more information um, about our history and uh, the, the current activities that we're engaged in and, uh, and our impact to the regional community as well.